What's happening to you is not abnormal. What's happening to you does have a reason and an explanation. But like with most things, if you don't know that reason, you can feel like you're crazy. Hey, my name's Jack and welcome to States Unlocked, the place to learn about social psychology, human behavior, and also learn practical tips on how you can improve your life. If you'd like to understand yourself and others better, be sure to hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload a new video. This video is all about wounding and defense mechanisms. So many of us live with wounds inside of us and these wounds don't necessarily have to be very obvious. In fact, most of the time they're not. Most of the time they lie underneath the surface and they only come out when we are triggered. So basically a lot of us have issues with different kinds of wounds and it's based on our life experiences. A lot of the time, these are things that happened in our formative years, and so we end up developing these wounds, which can be triggered throughout uh, the day-to-day -day when different things occur. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the day-to-day. -day. It could just be when certain things happen and it can hit wounds for us. Now, I believe we all have these kinds of wounds. If you deal with these wounds in an extreme way, and if you deal with these wounds very often, that could be something more along the lines of PTSD or complex PTSD. So complex PTSD is, if you don't know the difference between the two, that is more of a developmental PTSD. So um, perpetual traumas. It's not a one-time trauma. It's something where there's a lot of traumas and they're baked into your childhood often. And P regular PTSD is that you are, you know, doing fine, let's say, and then something happens, like, for example, if you're in a war zone and something horrific happens, and then you are triggered by lots of things in day-to-day -day life after. So basically, wounds are very unpleasant. Okay, wounds are really difficult to deal with and they can make us feel like we are completely crazy, especially given not everyone has the same wounds. And if you're speaking to someone who is neurotypical, they don't suffer with their mental health in any kind of way. Um, well, can I just say everyone so struggles with their mental health at some point. But generally speaking, they are doing all right. Then it can be very invalidating. It can feel very invalidating because you know, they may not relate to your situation and they may judge you or they may just not understand you, which can make you feel really isolated. And this can be problematic because what's happening to you is not abnormal. What's happening to you does have a reason and an explanation. But like with most things, if you don't know that reason, you can feel like you're crazy. And society really does not help this because society is very judgmental and tends to be pretty ignorant around these topics. And so, you know, that just compounds the issue. Again, another reason why sometimes people can be very judgmental is because they're trying to run away from their own stuff and therefore they are very dismissive of your stuff because that reminds them of their own stuff. So it's a whole hornet's nest of absolute bullshit and it can be, you know, really difficult to navigate. So these wounds occur, oftentimes they occur in our childhood. They don't have to, they could occur later on in life, but oftentimes it is when we're growing up and it can manifest in defense mechanisms. So we all have defenses, okay? We need them in order to survive. We need, when we feel threatened, our defenses go up. But people who tend to have gone through more hardships, more difficulties, they have more defenses and their defenses are more easily activated. And this just happens because, you know, the brain is just hyper vigilant to threat. And this is totally normal, but it's a very cruel, process by nature really because this person has suffered a lot to begin with and then they end up suffering more because they're constantly reacting to things which may in fact very well be threatening but a lot of the time are not threatening and this is because of a defense so it's a defense trying to protect you so you're constantly going to war with this you know potential threat and the thing is a lot of us can perceive threats in many different ways so I know people who struggle uh, with making friends. That can be one of their like defenses, and they um, that's something that really triggers them. They've got a wound around that. Like I also know people who struggle with romantic relationships, and they have wounds around that. And you know, so therefore they get defenses up, and they essentially block that from coming into their life because you know it is very threatening to them and it's a horrible feeling because they want friends or they want a relationship or whatever it may be, but they also feel that that is a threat. So it's this vicious cycle of like going towards something, but also constantly pulling away from it because it's, you know, basically enmeshed as like a threat, a source of, you know, a source of threat. So 
it is not an easy process to untangle this and even in my own life it's something that I want to understand better to work on my own wounds and work on you know untangling stuff and that is really the point I think that we need to be discerning and actually detangling like these belief systems because oftentimes this happens so unconsciously we're not conscious but let's say that we have a particular wound around a behavior and that causes us to interpret okay when this person does this behavior this means this this means they're trying to hurt me this means they're trying to attack me whatever else then that can basically get fused together and so it's so quick it happens in nanoseconds that our brains are our, our hippocampuses determine the meaning and then if it's a negative meaning it triggers the amygdala and we're in fight or flight and it's a horrible feeling and this is when we can get defensive that's why when you're in a confrontation or an argument with someone or a tense conversation it can go from not to 60 like that at times um with specific people because the uh, someone you might think is defensive is because that's that's what's happening it's happening so quick in their brain that they don't even realize it's happening and it could be you know, because like as I said, they're determining some sort of meaning from the behavior. Or you're doing that too. It's not like it's just always the other person. It's all of us. We all do this. So I think that it is, um, you know, something which we really don't understand very well as a society in terms of our defenses. And our defenses are, you know, designed to protect us. And so they are very sneaky, you know, they can start like infiltrating our thoughts. So we could start justifying things and start saying, oh, well, yeah, but this is the reason I do this and blah, blah, blah. And that's the aspect of you that is the defense talking. They have taken over. They are, they have the, the stage, so to speak. And they are, you know, just trying to protect you. They're just trying to protect you because at one point you were hurt, but this can actually be overprotective to the point where you actually don't allow things in so just while you won't let the potentially bad things in you also won't let, let the potentially good things in i've seen this a lot with romantic relationships you know where people have been burnt in the past and so their wall just goes up and up and up until it's a complete fortress and that's great because they you know don't get hurt they've got this huge fortress up but then they want to let love in. But in order to let love in, there's a potential for pain too. So they're like, no, the fortress is up. So they can't let love in because they've been hurt. And it's really self-destructive, to be honest. Because actually, you know, we need to be vulnerable. I've made a video on vulnerability. I would encourage you to look at this, that after this video. Because, you know, the two um, are very linked. And it's important to be vulnerable. It's so important to be vulnerable. And it's scary as hell. Because being vulnerable means we have to let the fortress down. And when we've been hurt, why the hell would we want to let the fortress down? Because we've been hurt, right? It's not going to make any sense to do that. But the thing is, it does make sense because what's meant to protect us can actually end up hurting us because it's stopping us from having great things in our lives. So it's definitely not an easy process. I'm not here to try to make out like, oh, just do this and that. But becoming aware of it is the first step in actually trying to do things differently. You know, I know as well as the next person, like how frustrating it can be to have these repeating patterns over and over and over again. But you know, the pattern just will keep on playing out until we actually start to engage with it differently. And we start to realize what it's there to actually teach us, so to speak. I'm not saying from like a kind of like spiritual perspective, you might believe in that way, you might not. But whatever way you look at it, there are things that we can learn from our patterns. And... A lot of the time, the interpretations we have made from situations aren't true. They are ill-founded and they could be, that could be the, you know, the foundation of our whole belief systems. And this is why they're so hard to topple because when we were children, we may have made a decision like, okay, let's say someone picked on you at school and then you develop a belief system that, you know, you think, oh, well, no one likes me, no one will ever like me. And, you know, I so I need to be on my own. And that is just so peppered into the way you think. So that's obviously going to affect the way that you show up in life. And when you get close to someone, you're going to be thinking, oh, no, no one likes me. So they're for sure going to reject me at some point or another. So that is the thing that we need to bear in mind. So if we believe, oh, okay, no one likes, likes me or whatever, then 
we are going to start thinking, okay, well, this person's for sure going to reject me, this person's for sure going to end up abandoning me, so I better distance myself and create a barrier. Now, all of this is an internal process based on one event. Perhaps one person didn't like you, or maybe two people, or maybe it was five or ten people, whatever it was, didn't like you, so therefore you create this narrative around that, and that creates all these, like, internal processes, and it is rubbish. It is, it's so crap, because... You know, we essentially end up recreating these situations over and over and over again in our lives to create what we know to be true. Because while these, this, um, you know, grounding m m must, like, while this must be, might be like causing us a lot of pain, it, it, we have a hold on something. We have a hold on to some walls, okay, is, that are like keeping us stable. Imagine if we didn't have those, even though, you know, they could be like, full of spikes and stuff, these walls, but we're holding on to them, even though it's keeping us in pain, because we need some sort of sense of, like, grounding. If we didn't have this, then we'd feel like we're just going to drop away. So it's really important to create an alternative narrative. And, you know, you're not going to believe this alternative narrative immediately. It's not going to even happen quickly at all, because your brain is going to be so attached to that old way of thinking, that old belief system. So it's really important to actually try your best to address this. If you've watched up until this point, I want to just say that I really appreciate you. I am so grateful to have you watching my video right now. And if you haven't subscribed already, it would be great if you would. And if you wouldn't mind sharing this video with one person that you think might get benefit out of it, out of my channel in general, that would be awesome because I'm trying to grow my channel. So I really appreciate that. And if you like the video too, that helps and comment and all of that good stuff. And without further ado, I'll just end the video here and I will see you on the flip side. Ciao for now.